Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? I can see you, but I still can't hear you. Okay, let me go back. Um, let me go back to Facebook that came out of it. Okay, say something. Can you hear me? No, they're all still looking yes, at. I can hear you. I can hear you. On Facebook. Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? I can hear you now. You guys can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now, Susan. You could have gone up to the sound of Okay. Yay! Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, let's. Can you guys still hear me? Oh my goodness, I'm not gonna touch anything. So we are experiencing a little bit of technical difficulties, but you guys, thank you so much for your patience. Um, I am so thrilled that you all <laughs> stuck around. Um, yay, you can hear me, I'm so excited. So as we get this live going, this is about mindset mastery. Woohoo! yes, Taylor, thank you so much. Um, this call is about, this Facebook Live actually is about mindset mastery, and it's really about mastering your mindset so you can master your life. And how appropriate is it that, you know, the day that I'm doing mindset mastery, I'm having technical difficulties on my live and my mind is full of chatter in terms of people are waiting oh my goodness and i have to calm i have to calm myself down settle myself and master the emotion that is coming up which is just pure oh my goodness anxiety whole bunch of emotions at the same time and so mindset mastery is really our ability to master our mindset Thank you, no worries, thank you so much. It is really our ability to master ourselves in the face of life. And how often has life come down your street and taken you out of the game? So if that has ever happened to you, and I know I'm not alone, just type in yes, absolutely. And while you're typing, um, I'll talk a little bit more about what this, this lie is about. So of course it's called Mindset Mastery, master your mindset, master your life. Thank you for joining. Before we get started, what I'm going to ask you to do is to share this live with uh, at least five people. And why five people? One is five is one of my favorite numbers. Two is knowledge is only power when implemented, used, but also when it's shared, right? And and so part of my commitment is to is to really support people in mastering the inch the two the inches between their two ears because that's where our power lies but knowledge is only power when we implement it and when we teach it when we share it so one of the reasons i love doing lives is the more i teach the more i grow and learn every time i prepare for a live i get insight and often in the middle of the live, I get an aha. And that's where mastery lives. It's our willingness to, to put our knowledge in, in a sequence that is that creates communication mastery. And communication mastery is the difference between speaking and actually sending out a clear and effective and impactful message. So what exactly is mastery? I like to say mastery is the conditioning of the mind. And the conditioning of the mind that occurs through this thing called insight and knowledge, right? So sometimes we get, we get to know ourselves, we have an aha moment, an insight, and that insight gives us access to a different way at looking at ourselves, a situation, an event, another person. And that insight is where change is, we have access to change, access to growth, access to all sorts of different things. So self-reflection and insight creates this thing called a new level of mastery. So one of the reasons I like mastery so much is because it creates it creates an internal power. And if you've ever heard me talk about power, 
internal power is the power that comes from the highs and lows, the ups and downs, the rise and falls. It's your bounce back. It's what you learn on the way back up. And, and why it's that place is because in order to have the learn, we have to master our emotions so that we can get the knowledge, we can change our perception, we can sit in acceptance, we can do all these things. And, and in that, we become more powerful because we have more, some people call it self-discipline. I don't actually like that word too much. It sounds like it's external. I like self-mastery, right? I have a new level of mastery over myself, over my thoughts. So I'm going to break down mastery uh, a little bit. And I noticed everybody saying, yes, everybody's had a moment where life has come down your street, knocked you over, and sometimes left you laying there. And there's times when we do we, we, what's going on in our on in our head makes it difficult to get back up. So mastery is, is what allows us to condition our mind, learn lessons so we can get back up. Mastery is all how we look at it look at things. So I'm going to talk about different types of mastery. And the first one I'm going to talk about is just plain old mindset, right? Now, mindset is the way we think. It's the way we look at things. It is the lens to which we view the world. So think of it as, um, as a pair of glasses. And how many of you know people who wear dark glasses? And when I mean dark glasses, I don't mean sunglasses. I mean, they just have dark glasses on all the time and the vision the lens through which they see the world is woe is me negative cup half empty problems they see the the bad stuff in everything and it's almost like they come into the room and a dark cloud follows them because they're they have dark glasses on and that is the lens and so they oftentimes for those people they aren't choosing how they see the world. They are reacting to the events of the world and they, and they have no power, right? So that's the first thing. Then you'll meet the person who has a different way, the lens, the glasses to which they see the world is sunshine and rainbows. They have those light glasses. They see the cup half full. They see everything positive. They see everything as opportunity, as growth. You know, they these are often the people we say have the Midas touch. And really the difference between the dark glasses and the, the sunlight glasses, those light glasses, is how someone chooses to interpret the events that are happening before them. So that's in our mind. It is the conversation that we have around what is happening. So I can say that something is a problem or I can say that something is an opportunity. I can see an event as a failure, or I can see an event as perfect and an opportunity for me to learn. And have you ever asked yourself how two people can experience the same thing and one person can see it as the best experience ever and another person can see it as, oh my gosh, Right. And so I don't know if you've heard this story and I'm not, I'm going to kind of give a synopsis of it. So uh, a, a company sends a bunch, two guys, two salespeople to a town. Right. And, um, and they're shoe salesmen. And, uh, and, and so they get to the town and the first guy gets there and he calls back his boss and he says, Oh no, we're not going to do any very well here. No one wears shoes. Shoes, they, they just don't wear shoes. We won't be able to sell a shoe here. And the guy wants to leave and go back to go back to where they came from. Then the other guy calls, calls the office and he goes, oh my gosh, you will not believe this. Nobody wears shoes here. This is gonna be amazing. It's the biggest opportunity ever. Same event, two different perspectives, right? Mindset mastery is really our ability to see the good, the opportunity, the gift, the, the growth in every situation. For me, when you look at mindset mastery, what I'm saying to you is everything is perfect. Everything is perfect. And that everything is seen as an opportunity. Even the darkest moments are seen as an opportunity. And I will say to you, in the times when I was at my lowest, the, 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 the transformation, the growth from my lowest back to standing back up 
has created many of the things I do today. It has created the way I look at the world today because I had to shift my perspective. I had to shift my mindset. And that growth has probably been the biggest gift ever. It's all how we choose. So for me, it was a perfect event, although it was one of the hardest times in my life, right? So the first thing is mindset, okay? The second one in, in mastery for me is habit mastery. And habit mastery is really just mastering your automatic way of being. We all have an automatic way of being. Habits are the things we do without ever thinking. It's the things we do when, when, when we're just on autopilot, when no one's watching, when everyone's watching. Sometimes we don't even know that we do them. But this is the interesting thing. And this is, you know, if you've ever read my book, Leading with Character, you will hear that I say your habits so your character is a sum total of your habits expressed over time. So this is what most people haven't put, put together. It's all your habits create who you are, who you are and how you're known in the world. So let me give you another example. I worked with someone who was absolutely brilliant. You know, one of those people off the chart, brain power, smart, 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 smart. And, uh, and they should have, yeah, master your automatic way of being. Exactly, Taria. So they should have, this person should have opportunity after opportunity. But this person had a habit of being late for everything. When I say everything, I mean everything. Missing deadlines, arriving to meetings late, uh, arriving to work late. They were just late all the time. Now, this was the thing. That one habit had them pass, be passed over for opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. Now, this is the thing. It wasn't that they weren't qualified. They were probably the most qualified person in the space. However, how they were known was as unreliable. See, that one habit determined how people saw them and determined the opportunities that were given. Now, why is this so key? Is because oftentimes when people are, are challenged or they're stuck in life, the tendency is to go take another course, go learn something new, go get no, new experience, go get another certification. And why I love mastery is before you go do all that, maybe the place that needs an overhaul is you right? Maybe it's your habits, it's your mindset, it's your automatic way of being. That's the one thing standing in the way of your success. So mastery of habits is a great way of us getting out of our own way. Mindset mastery is us really deciding to get out of your own way. So how many of you have a habit that you know, if you would just shift it, it would change everything. Now, this is what I want you to really get about habits, right? The power in habits is that habits either move you towards your goals or they move you away from your goals. But habits are things we, we unconsciously do. But once we're aware, once we have the insight and the knowledge, we have the ability to change the habit right? Habits aren't necessarily permanent. They're challenging to change, but they don't have to be permanent. It's a choice. So the beauty is that just through self-awareness, you can shift a habit. Now, I love to talk about the, you know, the weight loss billion dollar industry around this, because what they do is they, they have you restrict your food and do different things, but they don't have you actually have you look at your thinking and your habits. So people go on these crash diets, but they never actually change their mindset around food, exercise, all those things, nor do they change their habits. So when they get to where they want to go, the destination, the number on the scale that they want, they go back to all their bad habits because they weren't actually self-aware of the things that were getting in the way that was creating the weight gain, the, the results they didn't want in the first place. Mindset mastery is about that awareness of what are the habits that I may be required to shift so I can get where I want to go, right? So that's the second type of mastery. The third one is communication mastery. Now, this is so powerful because if you get it, you will... Um, it can totally change everything. So if you know Suzanne, 
you will know that I love language. I love words. And I love words because it is creation, right? It is creation. And this is how I want you to think about it. My environment, your environment influences, and that's the word, influences what I think, right? What I think, right, it influences my mindset. My mindset influences what I speak, what I say, the words I use. So I can tell someone's mindset by the languaging that they use. And my language is the first part of creation. I speak things into the world and they actually happen. So oftentimes people are wondering why all these things are happening to them and what they don't realize is they're actually thinking it and speaking it into existence. It's powerful, right? So we think it, then we speak it into existence. And it's the speaking it into existence that gives it power. So when you, when you look at mastery, what mastery really is, is really our, our awareness of two things, our internal dialogue and our external dialogue. But truly, it is the insight of the internal dialogue so we can choose what we create as external dialogue. Isn't that neat? So, so first of all, my internal dialogue will tell me a lot about my thinking. It'll tell me a lot about my influences, right? So I pay attention to my internal dialogue. And some days I'm like, Suzanne, you got to check that dialogue. And I'm careful what comes out of my mouth because I'm careful of what I'm creating, right? Now, we think that we're creating when we're speaking it. We're creating when we're talking to ourselves. That's when we're creating right? So part of communication mastery is really understanding what's running us internally so that we are able to check it and powerfully choose what we speak into existence. Now, when people think about communication mastery, they think about proper diction, proper language, all that sort of stuff, right? Communication. When I think of communication mastery, I think of self-awareness. I think of my internal dialogue, the conversations I'm having with myself, asking myself what's creating those conversations, what's the influence that's creating those conversations so that I can check it, shift it, so that I'm powerfully speaking into existence things that serve me. That's communication mastery. And if, you, if you're following this, you'll notice how they all come together. My mindset mastery actually creates my communication mastery. My habit mastery often creates my communication mastery. So it's all coming together. Communication mastery is such a level of self-awareness because you can check yourself even by checking what you speak into existence. Right. And, you know, I, I take a program and we pay attention to language. We pay attention to language. I can't try. Um, but all the words we use should, will, want. Right. And we pay attention to the the for 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 many of us, the definite impossibility of language. Right. That that can't happen or the abstract of that language, try, you can't try, it's either do or don't do, right? So we pay attention to what we're speaking into to existence because in that language and you get an awareness of your commitment or lack thereof, your belief in, in possibility or lack thereof of, of belief, your positivity or your negativity, your, your ambiguity, your language is a big tell. And if you start listening to people, like truly listening to their communication, you will get a sense of, of how they feel about the world, their situations, and themselves, because it's all over their language. So that's communication mastery. And then I want to talk about emotional mastery. Now, emotional mastery is 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 I think probably many people's biggest challenge. And the reason being is that most of us relate to our emotions as the real. So have you ever had a situation and just type in, I, I wanna hear from you, that you've related to your emotions as real? And, and, what would, and if you can identify the emotion, that would be really cool. How many of you have had a situation that you've related to your emotions as real? right? And your emotion determines your action after you relate to it as this is the deal. 
So it could be an emotion of I'm afraid, right? And you relate to the, the fear of often the unknown or the ambiguity of a situation as so real that you just don't, you choose not to do it. Yeah, yeah, Tria's like, yeah, that's me. Um, you relate to something as, um, as uh, I'm too tired, right? And tired is truly a state of mind. So I'm too tired, I can't do anymore. And the I feel tired determines whether you stop or start. And you know, and and you you will prove to yourself that when the when push comes to shove and you see yourself as half to tired goes away, right? So tired gets to choose, anxious gets to choose. And so what I'm indicating here is that many of us give our emotions power. And and so when we give our emotions power, our emotions are determining our destiny. Did you get that? Our emotions are determining our destiny, not us, not our free will, our choice. So emotional mastery. Yes, yeah, Taylor's going, fear's gotten me many times. Me too, girlfriend. Me too. Absolutely. I can totally relate. So this is why this work is so, so powerful. So emotional mastery is really this thing. Life comes down your street. So I like to say an event happens. An event evokes an emotion. Now mastery doesn't mean that you deny the emotion because that's just stuffing it down and that's the cause of a lot of emotional eating. Mastery doesn't say you deny the, the emotion. Mastery actually says you acknowledge, I'm afraid, I'm anxious, I'm sad, I'm frustrated, I'm angry. Whatever the emotion is, is you actually acknowledge it. But acknowledging it gives us power to choose, right? So when I acknowledge it, now I get to choose what is it am I going to choose to do in the face of this emotion? That is the power, that's the, the distinction. What am I going to choose to do? Now, what most people do is emotion happens. They don't actually take enough time to process this and they react from the place of the emotion. In mastery, what happens is the, an event happens, the emotion pops up, right? And our emotions are often framed from our past, not our present, and that's a whole other conversation. So our emotions pop up. And most of us, if, we, if we're stepping into mastery, we will say, okay, what is the emotion? How am I feeling? We will process the feeling and then choose an action that lines up with what we want. And sometimes it is really acting in the face of fear, right? I bet you many of you acted in the face of fear. I was at a, a, a situation with Cindy who's watching and, and I, the fear was all there, but she had the courage to act in the face of fear, right? It's acting in the face of anxiety. It's acting in the face of tiredness. It's acting in the face of anger and not letting anger run you, but to acknowledge that you're angry and choosing how you want to show up in the world. Oh, light bulb moment. I love it. Thank you. Right? So that's the power of mastery is that we acknowledge what's going on, but just because something's going on, doesn't mean that it gets to choose. You do. That's mastery, right? So, um, and this is the really, <laughs> you know, Cindy's like, I remember it well, right? This is the thing. And this, and remember I said that your mastery will create your influence. It'll create your power. I want you to think of how amazing you feel when an event occurs in your life and it brings up a host of emotions, could be anger, fear, frustration, all those things are happening at once. And you're able to process it and say, I'm angry, I'm frustrated, and I'm fearful. Acknowledge it to yourself and say, in the face of these emotions, what will I choose to do? And then you choose to do the thing that moves you through those emotions and you get what you want right? You get what you want. Now, there's a whole process that I teach to help you really understand how to do this, but you get what you want. And then you feel powerful. 
your self-esteem goes up, your belief in self goes up, your self-worth goes up, your belief that I'm 10 foot tall and bulletproof begins to happen because you've, you've kept moving in the face of life. You've had mastery in the face of life coming down your street. And in that moment, this is how it all comes together. You, you choose your communication because in it, for that to have happened, you've had to have an internal dialogue with yourself. This fear is not going to run me. Not today. Right, Cindy? Not today. I'm going to choose something different. Right. And then you start speaking to yourself. You notice we start communication. And that's what affirmations are for, by the way, because in the middle of all of this, what we do is we affirm to ourself, I can, I'm powerful, I'm strong, I'm courageous. We affirm to ourselves who we desire to be in the face of the emotion. That is why mastery is so powerful. Yes, ma'am. That is why it is. Right. So the last thing that last mastery I want to talk about is, is health mastery. Right. And I call it health, fitness and wellness mastery. This is, you know, anybody who knows me knows I love health and wellness and I love health and the wellness, not from the point of view of loving the gym, loving the diets, all that sort of stuff. I don't like it from that point of view. Those are the tools in my mind. Those are the tip of the iceberg. Those are the things we do. Why I like health, fitness, and wellness is it's the height of personal mastery. Because in order to master your health, your fitness, and your wellness, you are required to master your mindset. You are required to master your emotions. You are required to have mastery over your habits. And really what you're doing is you're having the mastery over you right? My health, your health is an indication of the level of mastery I have over who I am in the world. I say it's the brand that you put into the world. Your mastery, your health reflects the brand that you put into the world. So why health and wellness is so key for me is because I believe that your health, fitness, and wellness is the first product that you put into the marketplace. It's the first product that people buy. It's called you. It's the first product that people actually interact with before they have to interact with whatever product, other product you're selling at whatever widget service or whatever. The first person they've got to buy is the person that you have created mastery over the brand called you and health, wellness and fitness is where we practice cultivating a product called the brand right how we show up in the world and I will tell you how you show up will determine the yes or the no. It'll determine the access to the conversation. It'll open the door, right? So people think that Suzanne's like all fitness and, and health, like, like from a personal trainer. No, I'm not the personal trainer, I'm the mindset trainer. I love mastery because if you master here, it has a domino effect. So mastering your health has a domino effect because the same habits that affect your health affect your money. The same thinking, I can, I can't, whatever's running you, affects your money, your relationships, your business, all of those things. The same habits affect the other place. They, the same emotions that are running you are running your, your health, they're running your money, they're running whatever. If you, if you live in instant gratification around your health, chances are, you have a high likelihood of living in instant gratification in other areas of your life. Is this powerful? Oh, Taria saying I have, I am required to have mastery over my habits and my emotions. Yeah, that's how it runs. That's how it works. So this is what I want to leave you with, right? When I say you master your mindset, you master your life, you truly do. Because the minute we master how we're thinking, when we master our communication, when we master our, our, um, our language, when we master our habits, when we master our emotion, we have a new level of, of how we walk and interact in the world. And that determines your life. It determines how your relationships unfold. It determines how your business unfolds. It determines how your money is. It determines 
how, how you feel about yourself. It determines your health. It determines how you deal with adversity. It determines whether you rise or fall. It determines your bounce back effect. And that means like when life knocks you down, it determines how quickly and how powerfully you bounce back. It all lives right here. Now, this is the, this is the clincher. You and I have power here. No one else does. We do. And so when we're talking about mastery, we're talking about insight and knowledge. It's managing your influences, your communication, your insight, and how you interpret life. Do you have the dark glasses on or do you have the bright light glasses on? Do you walk into a room with the dark glasses on or do you walk into the room with, with glasses that are so bright that you become the lighthouse in the room? That's the difference. That's the difference, right? So I trust this helps. So this is this is what we're, we're going to be doing, and I gotta get I gotta get my date because I know we I established a date. So we've been talking about our our mastermind experience, and this is a taste of kind of you, <laughs> I am teaching you tonight. Yes, Taylor, that's what this is. This is my passion, girl. This so this is what we're doing. So if you want more of this, right? I've been talking about the mastermind experience. I'm pulling up my phone to tell you when it is. It is gonna be next Wednesday, next Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's the 24th. If you have not written challenge in the comment section, and if you have, just write it again, write challenge in the comment section. That will make sure that you are on our list to get an invitation for the mastermind. Okay, the mastermind is 90 minutes. You're gonna get, I run, a, I run an ongoing mastermind. You are gonna get an experience of what I do, right? This is a tip of the iceberg. Now what's beautiful about the mastermind, how it works is I teach for a moment. And for those of you that are in the mastermind, make some noise, make some comments so people know what's going on, right? So. I teach for about 20 to 30 minutes and the rest I facilitate a dialogue. So you guys get to, you get to communicate with me. You get to communicate with each other. I facilitate a process where you guys become the teachers and you learn from each other's moments, highs, lows, ups and downs. Like, like Taylor said, oh my God, I had some insight on the mastermind. I'd be like, Taylor, share what you got. So the rest of the play, the room could get it. And, and we build on it, right? And we expand it. And so the mastermind is a juicy, powerful conversation. It is a mind blowing experience. It is one of the things I absolutely positively love to do. So if you want to be part of that conversation, and get me live, it's going to be via Zoom. Now, these are these are the things that you gotta know when you show up to the mastermind. One is, you gotta show up on time, it's 90 minutes. Two is, you gotta show up with camera on, because I need to see your faces, right? Cindy's like, you definitely wanna be there. It is life-changing, it has changed her life. Thank you, Cindy. So you want to show up with camera on so I can see your eyes. I can see your facial expressions. You want to be in a room where you are not disturbed. Now, people who do my mastermind, this is their, this is their special time. I have people doing it in candlelight in their bedroom. And, and the purpose of it is this is an opportunity for you to fill your cup up. This is an opportunity for you to be poured into. So you don't want to be disturbed, right? So this is what we're, so this is the experience. So you want to make sure you block off the 90 minutes for yourself, lock the door. I know, I know one woman, she used to do it in her bathroom because she had young kids all over the place. So she'd lock herself in her bathroom and she would do her mastermind 90 minutes in the bathroom. Can you imagine? Right? Um, did we just end? No, I think my camera went out. I'm not sure what happened. I'm hoping you guys can hear me. So I am going to wrap. We're having all sorts of technical difficulties, but that's the way it is. They must know that I'm talking about mindset mastery tonight. So challenge in the, in I will see you on the 24th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Look for a questionnaire because I want to know why you're coming and, uh, and an invite and a link and Oh, she can still see and hear me. Thank you, Taria. 
Um, so look for a, a invite, look for a questionnaire. You'll get it once you register, you will get a Zoom link, but you gotta register so we know who's coming because it's I only take a small group because you know if we wanna do the interaction and make it just powerful for everybody, we take a small, a, a very small number. So everyone, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you for your patience and your support around the technical difficulties. I will, I'm trusting I'm gonna see and hear you on the 24th. I can't wait to hear your voice. It is going to be a fantastic experience. Take care, blessings, have a wonderful Easter and good Friday. And I will see you back here next Thursday. Take care.